An estuary is the tidal mouth of a large river where the oceanic tide meets the river water. Here, in Mulki, the Gurupura River, which has its origins in the Western Ghats, drain into the Arabian Sea. The water in estuaries can be classified under brackish water, which is saltier than fresh water, but not as much as true sea water. Tide is a phenomenon of the rise and fall of water in the oceans due to the gravitational forces exerted by the sun and the moon and the earth's rotation. During the high tide, the water level rises and fills the estuary. The consecutive high tides alternate with low tides every six hours. This is when the water level recedes and exposes the shallow sandy seabed. It is an estuary lined with coconut trees on one side and mangroves on the other. Mangroves are small trees that grow in saline and brackish water on the edges of the coastline as well as the estuaries. It protects shorelines from damages caused by cyclones, waves and floods and prevents soil erosion on the coastline, making it an essential part of the immediate ecosystem. Numerous stilt roots of the mangroves cling to the soft soil of the estuaries and prevent its erosion due to waves. Mangroves serve as a valuable nursery for young fish and other animals. They help in filtering pollutants and trapping wastes originating from land. The mangroves in this estuary are home to a variety of mussels oysters, snails, crabs, insects, and fish. During low tide, the tiny sand bubbler crabs begin to emerge from their burrows. They start persistently making bubbles of sand to extract tiny organisms as a source of food trapped within. It is a race against time for these millions of critters to gather as much food They have to do this before the tide shifts in the next 12 hours. They often have to fight to defend their territories and also rarely venture far away from their burrows, a method to avoid predators. These rather odd looking crabs are known as fiddler crabs. The males are seen to have two unequal sized pincers with one being enormous, which it uses to attract a mate and is also a weapon to ward off other competitors. Birds 
such as kingfishers, herons, egrets, kites, eagles, and other shorebirds are also seen here. One of the birds that are most often seen patrolling the sand floors is a sand plover. Sand plovers are seen on the coasts of Africa, Asia and Australia and migrate in large flocks to Tibet and Siberia to breed during the summer season. This is also when they start to develop a bright orange and black color plumage on the upper parts of the body. They are highly active ground feeding birds which prey mainly on crabs, and marine worms. Sanderlings are some of the most beautiful shorebirds with their distinct snowy white plumage that stands out in a crowd of other shorebirds. These are some of the most commonly seen shorebirds on the tropical and subtropical shores of the world and are generally found in large flocks gathering on open beaches. During the breeding season, they migrate towards the North Pole in the summer and develop a bright and attractive orange colored plumage for breeding. These are easily recognizable and interesting shorebirds called ruddy turnstone. They are called so because of their peculiar behavior where they overturn the rocks, seaweeds and shells to catch prey such as crabs and insects. Like sandalings, they are commonly found on tropical and subtropical shores of the world and migrate towards the North Pole during summer for breeding when they start to develop a darker plumage with striking black and white upper parts and a bright orange back and wings. Common sandpipers are shorebirds widely found in many wetlands and seashores of the continents of Africa, Asia and Australia. During the brief summers, they migrate to parts of Europe, Siberia and China for breeding. In some cases, the pair mate before migrating to their breeding grounds, where they perform unique courtship behaviour. Sandpipers generally feed on a range of crabs, insects, spiders, seashells, frogs and occasionally fish. They meticulously stalk their prey before lunging themselves to capture it. The Wimbrel is a large shorebird with an extremely long curved bill. 
These large birds are seen all over the world except the continent of Antarctica. They mainly feed on invertebrates, especially crabs, which they pick by boring their beak down into the crab holes in the sand. A Eurasian oystercatcher can easily be identified by its unique black and white plumage and orange beak and legs. They get the name because of their peculiar feeding behavior of preying mainly on oysters, mussels and other bivalves. These Eurasian oystercatchers are large shorebirds under threat as their population is globally declining due to habitat destruction. We filmed this pair for over a month and it is hugely upsetting to see this particular bird with a broken right foot. However, the exact cause is unknown, but the possibilities could be predators, an injury due to a storm or human interferences where it might have gotten entangled in a fishing net. Terns are easily recognizable, small to medium sized shorebirds with a characteristic slender body and long pointed wings. The most commonly found terns here are medium-sized crested terns characterized by a black head and crest with a yellow-orange beak. Caspian terns are larger with a bright red beak, a black head and a white body. Little terns are the smallest of them found in India. While the adults have a yellow beak, with a black tip, the juveniles have an entirely black beak. Most terns primarily feed on fish. They are seen continuously flying around the open sea and come to the shores to rest. Gulls are common shorebirds in estuaries. These are brown-headed gulls in their breeding plumage. Gulls mainly feed on fish and breed on high-altitude lakes on the Tibetan Plateau during the summer and are usually seen on marshes, estuaries, lakes and rivers during the winter. Western Reef Heron is a large waterbird commonly seen on the coasts of India and East Africa. These are resident birds of Mulki that feed mainly on fish, amphibians and invertebrates. Life is hard for these birds in an estuary. While the heron attempts to snatch a bigger prey, there are sharp, watchful eyes everywhere ready to claim the price. As it strikes an attack to capture its prey, a Brahmini kite waiting at a distance sees its best opportunity to get a free meal. In an instant, they dive to attack the heron, one by one, only to succeed in stealing the poor bird's lunch. This estuary has a vast diversity of fish population and it benefits many small-scale fishermen. But not everything here is harmonious. The wildlife here faces one of the greatest threats to their existence, us, human beings. This estuary gains great attraction 
from a lot of tourists because of its scenic beauty. While ecotourism helps in educating people about the importance of estuaries and mangroves, at the same time, it unfortunately contributes to an increase in pollution in this area. Plastic and abandoned fishing nets lay scattered across the shores of this estuary. These nets trap many fish as well as fishing birds, causing this to be the main cause of deaths on shore. During the course of our shoot, we have witnessed several birds which were entangled in fishing nets. Here is a crested tern which has a strand of fishing net around its neck. Sadly, not many survive in these conditions. Chemicals seeping from the plastic waste dumped in the sea, release of toxins from nearby industries, and sewage disposal have polluted the water. Changes in the water salinity and rising water temperatures have also contributed to the declining diversity in these estuaries. Over the past decade, locals have reported a decrease in the number of seashells and crabs in this area. Mangroves act as a protective barrier against erosive waves and trap pollutants. Without these barriers, many buildings and infrastructure along the coastline are under threat. Humans have been exploiting these mangroves for many decades, for timber and firewood, thus eliminating several mangrove forests. Over the years, we have witnessed several buildings and roads getting damaged due to crashing waves and soil erosion. With every patch of land that loses the grip of its mangroves, more homes succumb to the power of the seas. As much as we are in awe of this marvelous beauty, it can't sustain in a human-induced environment of plastic and sewage. It is upon us to educate people of the vast ecosystem contained by this beautiful estuary. With every passing minute, more dump yards make their way into these serene lands. We must take action. And this is our call to you.